Hello, welcome to the Graduate Research Forum for Spring 2022. My name is Megan Cohn and I'm a graduate student in the Department of Organization, Workforce and Leadership Studies at Texas State University. The title of my research study is Women in Leadership in the Workplace. Women have come a long way since they first entered the workforce, but there is evidently still a long way to go. Workplace culture is constantly evolving, yet women in leadership lack representation. According to the Pew Research Center, women only make up 7.4% of CEO positions at Fortune 500 companies. Organizations fail to adequately challenge the status quo that disproportionately favors white men. Women may be getting into leadership positions more often, but the lack of representation reflects larger problems at play. The purpose of this study was to examine the experiences of women leaders in the workplace. Research questions guided the study centered around pathways to leadership, obstacles, and supports. The study used qualitative methods. Participants included six women who worked in their organizations in a position of leadership. Five participants were white and one was black. Two participants were in their 30s, two were in their 40s, and two were in their 50s. Sandra, Diana, and Autumn work in the warehouse industry, which is dominated by men. Carly, Christy, and Tanya work in the insurance industry, and their organizations were dominated by women. Their experience and their roles vary. However, all participants have past leadership experience outside of their current roles. Five participants lived in Texas and one lived in Oklahoma. Data collection comprised of interviews and field notes. Interviews consisted of a semi-structured protocol conducted through Zoom, which were recorded, transcribed, and field notes were taken. Data analysis comprised thematic coding of transcribed interviews and field notes. Research questions served as a guide to the coding process, which revealed several findings. The first finding related to men in leadership who acted as mentors for women leaders. All participants noted men in their lives who assisted them in some way to excel up the management ladder to become the leaders they are today. This included mentors giving participants autonomy in their role, motivation, advice, and incorporation of differing leadership styles. This reveals that men can create positive forces that uplift women in the workplace, contrary to the negative impact men have on women in the workplace on a systemic level. The second finding related to the negative impact dominant leadership norms have on women in leadership in our society. This refers to men being seen as natural born leaders and the linkages that exist between professionalism and the emulation of white men. Being authentic isn't always possible in the workplace for women leaders with leadership norms in place that were founded on masculine approaches to professionalism. Participants like Christy expressed that they are expected to use methods like strict discipline, even if they prefer a different approach. This quote reflects how unharmonious women can feel with expected leadership professionalism procedures, like the use of discipline. The only participant of color, Autumn, explained how her identity is altered at work due to her blackness. Her preferred way of speaking, Abonics is limited at work because it can be seen as unprofessional. These internal conflicts participants experience due to leadership norms hinders their full potential in the workplace because of their inability to perform their work in an authentic manner. The last finding was women's unique benefits to organizations. Participants use skills like taking the initiative to cross train themselves and work outside of their role to excel their career. Collaboration and empathy were also important themes across interviews. These skills allowed them to excel in their own careers as well as innovate their companies. Skills like collaboration are crucial for modern workforce demands. Women are likely to offer these innovative workplace strategies demonstrating their value for organizations. 
Autumn discussed her collaborative review process. She takes an unconventional approach where she tells her employees to grade themselves so they can discuss their thoughts. Tanya discussed her mantra. She tells her employees that they work with her, not for her. All participants considered collaboration to be one of their strongest skills. For practice, the study offers implications for women leaders in the workplace, women aspiring to leadership in the workplace, organizations, educators, and men in leadership in the workplace who are wishing to change the status quo. The study was limited because of its small sample size, lack of perspective for more women of color, and lack of diverse geographical regions. To address the study's limitations, future studies using qualitative methods might examine men in leadership and their impact on women in the workplace to further delve into the topic of men in mentorship. There should also be more research dedicated to women of color regarding how race impacts their experience and leadership in the workplace. Future studies using quantitative methods might investigate employee satisfaction survey data from women at organizations, including salary changes over the years and how salaries compare to different types of organizations or types of roles. A future practicum might include working in mentorship, coaching, or leadership development programs for women or other underrepresented groups. Men in leadership can make positive impacts on women in the workplace. Workplace cultures need to change to be more flexible and inclusive of alternative perspectives than the leadership norms that are ingrained into our society. Alternative perspectives are the valuable insight organizations need to challenge norms of society that hold back innovation. The study determined that men in leadership can act as mentors, dominant leadership norms clash with alternative leadership styles, and women offer innovative abilities for organizations. Culture conditions need to improve to inc increase women in leadership and the impact they can have on their organizations. It will take more than individual efforts to change the lack of representation of women leaders. It will take systemic change to create organizational cultures that truly capture inclusivity. Please take the time to share if you like or dislike my presentation. Feel free to leave comments with any questions you have. I will facilitate comments and answer questions until March 6, 2022. Thank you.